You will never guess who I've been speaking to. Oh, who is this now? Okay, do you know who Chris Riley is? Mm, I can't say I do. Okay, I didn't think you did. But I'll tell you who does. Scott Disick, you know, from Keeping Up Kardashians. Oh, yeah, my mate Scott, I know. Yeah, so he, your mate, <laughs> he's had a reading yeah. from him and he said it is unreal. Okay, it's, sounds a bit far-fetched if you ask me. Yeah, I know you don't really, like, believe in it, but I do, so I think I am going to go and see him. You carry on, babe. You carry on. You're your own woman. You do what you like. <laughs> Let me try it and persuade you then. Okay, he's had 30,000 five-star reviews on Trustpilot in only six months. So if that's not good, then I don't know what is. 30,000 five-star reviews. That's, that's pretty yeah. good. So what's the deal then? Okay, so the deal is for just £10, you get a 10-minute reading. Oh, and looky here. I just found his Instagram. His at is Chris Riley Psychic. You've got to be over 18 and all calls are recorded and need the bill payers' permission. But what is he going to tell me, which I don't know? I don't know, but I just, I want to do it. So I'm booking him in. Oh, you tell us we're going to be a billionaire in a couple of years' time. Oh, yeah. Okay, so call 0330-201-9605 and use the code Liam Millie for a £10 reading or head to chrisreillypsychic.com for more info. Riley is spelled R-I-L-E-Y. I'm just sort of segging, segwaying is the next oh. thing there. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh. Ready? Oh, no, no. Because there seems to be a lot of uh, me asking you, Millie, you don't seem to be that bothered about the fact I've been in a new place as well. It's quite rude. <laughs> Shut up. The f***. Hey guys, welcome back to our podcast. I am Millie Court and this is my gorgeous, gorgeous boyfriend, Liam Reardon. Now, before we get going, don't forget you can follow us on socials on TikTok and Instagram at Liam and Millie Podcast. And we'd love to, to write to us for absolutely anything. Email us on Liam and Millie at sonymusic.com. If you're thinking, why is my background slightly different to the normal, like at home or our background that we have when we come into the studio. We did try and film at my house for about a good 45 minutes, weren't it, babe? <laughs> so basically, I've been sat in my sofa <laughs> studio for about four hours now. Um, <laughs> we started filming at like half one. Um, yeah. And Millie's Wi-Fi stopped working. <laughs> so basically, it all went It went yeah. to the put. And Millie had to catch a taxi in the London. Took an hour and 30 yeah. um, to get to the podcast studio. And... I've just been sat here hanging about, um, <laughs> scratching my balls. Before waiting. we jumped on, we yeah. I was like, oh, I had to have an energy drink in the cab because I thought, I know we're at the end, coming towards the end of the day, the day now and I'm running out of energy. So I'll have a little energy drink. Liam goes, what did you say? Got nothing left. So, right, let's get into it then. Yeah. <laughs> Can you see? You're okay. So, like, your Wi Fi is just it's, it's, it's draining me. It's annoying. I know. Like, the Wi Fi switch is bad. But I think I'm going to get that. I don't know if anyone knows this, like, this Starlink one, Elon Musk. People have been recommending it. It's very clever technology, apparently. Apparently so. I'm sure Elon Musk listens to this podcast. So, Elon, Elon sought me out, mate. If you do please. hear this, then. I like you know, this set better anyway. It is not, a nice set. It's much better than one you've got the house. The one at home, yeah, exactly. Yours is very, very plain, you know. It's not like. Mine, my house, in my place is very... Yeah, uh, so can we just notice now on Liam's set that he's changed the tree from white to green? Yeah, so the last week you may have saw some white twigs, which I found outside. Um, <laughs> I used them as a sort of decorative piece. It wasn't very decorative at all. Um, but I now I've got, a nice, I've got a nice green plant now. Yeah. Um, I've got some smelly old socket here, so I've just put uh, some <laughs> vinyl disc. What's it called? It's a vinyl. A vinyl, yeah. But it's obviously a fake plastic clock version. Um, I don't know if it's going to be in the shot. But anyway, that's hiding in the socket. I got a nice couple of shelf there. I got a blue light behind me. It's all going on. It's, it's all going on. And I think my setup's better than Millie's. No. So, you know, Millie's in the Sony studio this week. And it's looking a lot better than the place she's usually in. So, um, 
Well, yeah. it might have to be a recurring thing going forward. You just don't know how long until this Wi-Fi thing's going to be sorted. But that's fine. Um, I should have just stayed in Wales this weekend, though. Um, I actually went down to Wales last Wednesday and stayed there until yesterday. I should have just stayed and we should have done a duo at yours. Well, I did say that, but, you know, Millie know. just started her own jewellery brand and she's busy with that and she had to rush off back on Monday morning to sort that out. But um, we had a lovely week last week, babe, didn't we? Yeah, that you know, that's <laughs> it's like being a boss bitch. Boss bitch. <laughs> a boss bitch with no Wi Fi. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not exactly a boss bitch right now, but no. um yeah, we had a really lovely week. What did we do? We went to obviously in honor of Halloween, went to see Smile Two, which I absolutely loved. Yeah, we did. It was I was a bit anxious going, you know, I, I was trying to psych myself up because it's a lot it's a lot um, mm. these, these movies are a lot it was but... scary I would say it's quite like an intense one like yeah it was very it intense. was intense and we went we went with our friends Amy and Jack we and did. uh Wait, what about when you tried to um, scare Amy and then elbowed her in the oh, tip? No. Forgot so we, about that. <laughs> we were in the cinema and I, Millie was there I was here Amy was next to me and Jack was on the end and you know when it goes all silent on the film and I tried to scare her but accidentally elbowed her in the boob. <laughs> so that wasn't ideal. The Literally film was full great. pearl elbow right in the tear. I did. And she was like, ow, what? <laughs> so I did actually scare, I scared her but hurt her more than anything. Um, <laughs> it was a good film. It was a questionable sort of ending. Very gory as well, wasn't it? Yeah. Speaking of gory, we've been watching Gangs of London this past week as well, haven't we? Oh, we have. We're right into that. So, so good. And it's very, very, very graphic, which I also like. Yeah. Um, that's intense as well. I feel like a lot of stuff we watch is Thing very is, though, intense. Liam doesn't really like series. So when I actually finally get him into a series, like, then he just, he gets obsessed. Like, <laughs> when he's watching a film, he gets, like, locked in, which is good. Is what what you want with, like, a film-watching partner. But, like, he's now obsessed with this series. And when we're apart from each other, like, we like to be on the same episode so that we can, like, talk about it. Or, you know, when I'm next down, that we're on the same episode so we can watch it together. And I think by the sounds of it, baby, you've been watching it without me. I have, yeah. I started no, watching it again yesterday. Um, that's not fair. How many episodes? Uh, I think I watched, like, two episodes, three episodes. And it's good. Three episodes. Yeah, maybe. That's what I mean. I obsess and I like, if I'm watching a film, My game. Millie will try and talk to me. And I'm like, <laughs> I just, like surrounding sounds just don't process my mind. Like I'm only locked in on that film. Yeah. And like, I remember we watching it, I think it was the night. Yeah, it was Sunday evening. And Millie was leaving Monday morning. And she was saying to me, um, babe, when am I going to see you again? You know, we haven't got a day planned in. And I just, couldn't even hear her. I, I wouldn't even, I was focusing on Gangs of London. She said, Oi, tell me when, when I'm seeing you next. I said, Babe, look, I can't tell you right now. You know, I'm, this is going on. You know, I need to watch this. I can't tell you when we're going to see each other next. You literally can't multitask. But we will. You know, we'll see each other again one day in, in the near Why future. Why are you talking like that? <laughs> we'll see each other again one day. Like, what do you mean? For that time, that's all I was concentrating on is Gangs of London. Yeah enough of watching telly we also went for a really lovely walk because Liam bought a new camera this week didn't you I did I bought a new Sony camera big up Sony tell um, everyone what it is because you've had a lot of comments of people asking you what camera and it feels like you're gatekeeping it and we're not, gate not. we're I've not gatekeepers around here we're not gatekeepers we're gate openers um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a Sony a7 IV so that's IV um, I was going to get the Sony A7 III, which is I, I, I. No one needs getting... to know that information. Okay. Um, I ended up getting the Sony A7 IV and it is just incredible. Um, I'm obsessed with it. Me and Millie are in our photographer era. Uh, you may have saw oh, my Instagram God. posts where we went out to the park. Stop saying that. And all the autumnal colors were just like screaming at me. Like, Liam, take a photo of me. Like the leaves on the floor screaming, Liam, take pictures of me that's what it was like and I loved it so if you can't get hold of me or if you don't know where I am you'll probably find me in some park somewhere taking photo of leaves taking photo of trees no, that's no, part, no I'm no, in that no. era I'm, I'm, I'm done with the partying I'm done with the going out I'm in my done with the partying photographer era I plan on coming to Wales to have like a really wholesome weekend we were supposed to have a Halloween party and I I just thought I can't have another weekend of drinking 
And what happens? I thought wholesome Wales take the dogs out for lovely walks. Like me and Liam can go to the movies, which we did. But then it got to Saturday, met up with Jack and Amy again, and ended up having one few too many down the pub. And I'm sick of it. I just yeah, I need I'm sick I need some well. time off. But you said you're you're not going to drink now until Berlin when we go away from my yeah. birth when you got my birthday present. Yeah, which I did say on last week's podcast that I'm having a detox. I'm not drinking as well. And then but you did. Five yeah. Days so later, are you going to keep up with it, or I we just going to keep lying every week? I swear on my life. I am not drinking until we go until we get to the airport really? into, for Berlin. Until we get to the airport, I'm not drinking. I promise well, you. Well, okay. I kind of want to maybe like do some sort of if if you don't keep this up, then you need to do a forfeit. Okay. Yeah. I'm easy with that. But I promise you, I'm in my I've been smashed the gym now. If I do drink, it's just <laughs> gonna be, you know, once a week or once every three weeks. Um, but I'm knuckling down now. No, okay. Well, I can't join you on that one because I'm going to New York next week. So I will be drinking there. You will probably be. Every That'll day. be fun. That'll be fun. Okay. So everyone everyone who listens to this podcast now when it comes out, uh, you can comment a forfeit, which you'd like me to do yes. if, if I do touch the the alcohol. Um, Good idea. I'll be truthful if I do drink. Well, I'll um, know. I will know. You will know. But aside from that, yeah. Minnie, you've recently just moved uh, into London from Essex. Mm. Tell us how it's been going. How's the move gone? Well, it's been just over a month now. And do you know what? It's very, very different to Essex. It is. And there's a couple of things that stand out the most. One thing's like, I thought, oh my God. And it's so little and minor, but I was really surprised by it. Basically, in Essex, the bin men, <laughs> the bin men come once a week and it's just one bin man. And if you leave too many boxes out, like cardboard boxes, they won't take them all. And even if you leave too many black bin bags out, like they don't take it all. And it used to really annoy me. I think, oh, where else am I supposed to put this? Like you, you, that's your job. Anyway, <laughs> come to London, <laughs> come to London. There is a special man for a bin man uh, for recycling there's a special bin man for food and there's a special bin man for black bins and they're all they're all special yeah they're all uh they're all pretty special because guess what they all come separately they come up to my house they they collect it from directly outside my house like they are the nicest bin men ever and they're clearly doing a lot for the environment because However, the recycling comes every week, but the black bin bag don't come every week. In Wales, so the recycling is every week. Black bin bag, which shouldn't be much because you should be recycling a lot of the stuff. You know, I've yeah. said this to you many of times. You should be recycling most well, stuff. Well, I am now. Yeah, which you are, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. And great... I'm doing food waste. Can you believe that? I just can't believe it. I'm absolutely can't believe astonished. It. I can't, I'm astonished, and I'm happy because... You know, it's good that you're recycling. Um, you know, I'm hot on my recycling. I love doing it. No, I'll tell you a funny story on the subject of like a food waste bin. So when we lived in Epping, me and Liam, like Liam's always done food waste. This was waste. a few years ago, man, when, when we lived together. Yeah, when we lived together, he has always done like food waste in Wales. So when we lived together, he wanted to do it in, in Epping as well. But we, I never done that before. Like my family's never done that. I don't know whether that's the etiquette, but like, probably is I just didn't do it so anyway Liam's doing it for us every week and then when we break up Liam leaves me now and now I'm home alone and without even knowing Liam's left a food waste bin in my cupboard and because I don't take that bin out I just didn't even know it was there and I think Liam came round like a month later to get like the rest of his bit, bits in the food waste bin was still in my cupboard with maggots all over it. It, it was like six it, weeks later. It, yeah. It, 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 it stunk, stunk as soon as I walked in the apartment. I'm like, how could you no, it not didn't. smell that? Yes, it did. It was, it was smelling. As soon as you walked in, that's when it started smelling because your ass stinks. <laughs> <laughs> Because you just stink all over. No, it's because you smell so much. You no. could not. Your nose blind because you literally smell in well, your like nose on your body. Smell maybe. You just got used to the smell of shit because you smell all the time. 
<laughs> the, the, the food waste was there for six weeks, gone off, unked the house out. You couldn't smell it because it was no different to what you know just smells your body all the time. So there's no, no, difference. no, no. You, you, you just stole my joke there. No, I didn't. Yeah, you did. You just stole it and, and now made me out to be a smelly one when you literally smell. But anyway, so that, the bin men situation baffled me. And then the other thing is this London traffic. Like, I don't know why I've even got a car. Takes 100 hours to get just two miles away. Yeah, that's annoying. I hate which that. Which is a little bit annoying. Um, But I'm just, I'm a train girl now. I'm going to have to be a train girl. Yeah, but fine. even where you live, there's not like a train station right next to where you live. So you still have to get a cab or a car to get to the train. Yeah. And it's just like so busy out where your house is. So busy. So it's like... 15, 20 minutes busy, to get busy. to the train station. And oh, then, you know, it's just annoying. Painting just live in Wales. It's just one train from my town all the way to Cardiff. Easy. Ooh, Wales <laughs> is just so much better than everywhere. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> but you're happy? Are you happy where you've moved? No, I'm really, I am really happy. Yeah, I love it. It's just, it's not Essex. And it doesn't feel homely yet. Yeah, it'll but come. We are still living in a bit of squalor because we are just messy and... There's just so much to still unpack. and You want to get that done. But I think we did ask our listeners um, for crazy, wild stories or things that surprised you when you'd moved into a new home. So should we call out some of those, babe? Let's do it. Okay, you go for the first one. So the question of the week was, have you ever had an ex- unexpected surprise or shock when moving into a new town? Yeah. We have Isaac. I moved to Peru and every day at th- after 3 p.m. I have no running water. <laughs> what? But that should that's... be illegal. Wait, so you can't shower? <laughs> well, I'm you assuming... You only shower in the morning. <laughs> well, not unless he just like runs a bath and, you know, uses the the morning water in the night as well. No toilets. You can't use the toilet because the running water oh, yeah. flushes the toilet. So you have to poo in a bucket or something. Unless you just like pooed and left it in there in the following morning then you can flush it <laughs> and you flush it Ugh, yeah. you wouldn't be able to do that with your bloody poos mate well at least you wouldn't smell it because you obviously nose blind because you stink all the time anyway literally your poo would fill the bucket as well so <laughs> that's rank <laughs> right we got Maria when I moved back home to Wales Ooh. oh from Milton from, Keynes from Milton Keynes and got with my next door neighbour a year later didn't <gasps> expect that oh yeah slay what a slay that is isn't it a sleigh? What? What do you mean? How is that a sleigh? <laughs> well, sleigh. We've we've got some stories of neighbours to tell later, but we'll save that for a bit. But that's funny. She literally she fell in love with her, her neighbour. That is a bit of a sleigh. A bit of a sleigh. Yeah. Sleigh. It's like girl next door. Like, ooh, exciting, isn't it? That's not what girl next door means. Well, she is the girl next door. So what? it mean then she's the girl next door but it doesn't necessarily mean like that's the girl saying. next door well okay well, you like, just I'm... never get any sayings right <laughs> I'm never talking, get them I'm right. talking about the literal meaning of girl next door because it is literal right what else we got we got um, Layla there's a local man <laughs> oh no what what there's a there's a local man that poos in front of the fish shop every <laughs> Tuesday evening around 7 <laughs> Is that you? <laughs> that's that's why I asked to come here. What? Surely not. <laughs> that, that, uh, also, Poos. she's seen him do this. Like, how did she know the time and the exact, you know, every Tuesday at 7.30? Imagine, like, you've just moved to a new town or moved somewhere and you, you, your family member rings you. How's it going? Yeah, I like, just, this man keeps shit outside the fish and chip shop. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, it's just as bad, nearly as bad as someone who might have seen the poo up on the wall that you shat on all in uh, oh, for no, Tidfield. Yeah, don't say that. I was a youngster. I pulled over some wall. <laughs> Disgusting. Yeah. Oh, my proudest moments. I was a youngster, just... very, very pissed on my head. Um, but let's move on from that one. What's the, the last window? one? Tell us the last one, babe. Maddie, when I moved more towards the countryside, I was shocked with how many more people say good morning. Yeah. Yeah, that's... It- that's nice. It's a nice thing, isn't I it? I think it's lovely. Look, we're all human beings. Yeah. We all live in the same planet. You know, you might have different, you know, you might not know each other. You might have different beliefs, different stuff going on. But just starting your day, good morning to a stranger. I think it's lovely. You know, it's, you know, you never know what someone's going through. Just a simple smile. Good morning. How are you? 
I think it goes a long way. It's it effortless. Does go a long it way. takes absolutely nothing to say yeah. hello to a stranger. Um, I agree. And I also love it as well when I say that and they just ignore me and buy me. So, which is that's quite nice as well. Um, <laughs> so, you definitely would get ignored. Middle finger to all those who ignore me when I say hi on a morning walk. Oh, <laughs> I'd reply to you. If you fucking walked past me and I didn't know who you were saying hi, I'd be like, You'd be straight in the bushes of me. <laughs> yeah, I would. Hey, what's your number? <laughs> sexy, sexy. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Obviously, everyone's nice in Wales, but like, what's it? No, well, sorry, no, not everyone is nice in Wales. You know, I've met a fair few pricks in my life over from Wales. All right, so, okay. You know, they're all nice, but the majority of people are nice. Are your, are your neighbours nice? Not that you're probably going to sit here and say that they're not because... I tell you what. Like we've, where we've just moved, so where we've always lived <clears throat> in the house where I lived since I was born, we had no neighbors. Well, we had like one neighbor, like in the distance away. Um, and they were always <laughs> lovely. Uh, so we're not used to having neighbors. So what's different this year now? We're gonna actually have trick or treaters. We're gonna have little, little kids <laughs> coming around with sweets. So we have to actually get some sweets now. But I'm just gonna get a couple of apples for them. But you've um, literally lived a sheltered life. Like, how can you sit there life. and say... I haven't lived in a cave, babe. You know, I, lived, you know, how I just can lived you say out in the countryside. You've never had a trick-or-treater. Does that mean you never went trick-or-treating? Um, I used to, like, go down my cousin's houses. And um, do it there. And then we go out down there. Um, I remember my okay. dad, one year, bought a load of dust sheets. Cut, bless him, he's such a good father. He, uh, a load of dust sheets, <clears throat> and he cut them up, like, into, like, four-inch thickness slices pieces and he turned me into a mummy <laughs> and i went trick-or-treating as a mummy i sweat my tits off um <laughs> but it was good though everyone was scared shitless of me That's pretty good um <laughs> anyway back to my neighbors they're absolutely lovely i think they're all in their like 70s 60s 70s um the one neighbor um do you know their whole family as well? Uh, we're getting to know them. Yeah, we are. We are learning the, uh, <laughs> their family history, and uh, yeah, I'm just starting to learn who their kids are, their relatives. So if I see them around town, I say, "Oh, with your parents the other day." Oh. Um, but they've they grow vegetables. Our next door neighbours, and bless him, the guy he oh. he came. My dad, my dad went round there to cut the guy's hair because um, my dad's a hairdresser. For those of you who don't know. Um, and so this guy is well, he grows vegetables and he turned up on, I think, what was it, Saturday and uh, with loads of vegetables. Bless him. Oh, darn. Um, and our other neighbours on the other side, they're lovely as well. So, um, yeah, we've got some great neighbours. And But what, you know, we know you've got a history of sort of neighbours where you didn't really get on with all your neighbours. Um, what are your neighbours like now? So we've got obviously two neighbours. <laughs> And that's how many neighbours I have. Obviously, I've got two neighbours, one each side. Um, one of them I've not met yet, so not sure. The other neighbour, we've actually already partied with her. We have. We've had a drink with her. <clears throat> and yep. she's a bundle of fun. She is. Um, I, I've never, I'm actually not used to having neighbours that I'm now in a group chat with and speak to regularly, actually, <laughs> in this group chat. Like kind of is just popping off to be honest like I know all about her right now because we had she stayed until like 2 3 a.m didn't she the other day it was something like that yeah yeah so we yet to meet her husband or her to be husband can't remember if they're married or not um but they're a vibe so I'm actually yeah. quite happy that there's been I finally got some nice neighbors but I think they, I think they quite like a drink, and so do you and Chloe. So if you ever need yeah. some wine or something, you can pop next door and they'll give you some wine. Oh, yeah. I'll actually read you text message that I've received just before I came here. Okay. Um, <laughs> would you ladies like to come over for drinks tonight? We've got the kids too, and they're dying to meet you now that we've told them you're famous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're well, taking they them out for Halloween, um, but they'll be back around 7, 8 p.m. I said, babe, I'm really sorry. Um, I'm working late tonight, which I am. Um, we're, it's now like, I don't know, 6 o'clock or something. So mm, Yeah, you're going to be tired I'm after this. I'm working late. I'm, I'm going to be tired after this because I've been here since half past one. Yeah? Oh, my God. You know, on this podcast, it's still, not, it's still not done. You know, we're still on you. Like, I thought we'd be finished by now. Yeah, well, you just <laughs> obviously hate speaking to me. 
<laughs> yeah, I just spent a bloody week with you, and now I got rid of you yesterday, and I'm stuck on you another four hours you're, with you. You're bored of me again, are you? <laughs> yeah. We need a break. I think we need <laughs> we need some time apart because you are starting to really bore me. <laughs> <laughs> Impossible. I'm joking. You could never bore me, babe. But moving house is stressful, and it can cause arguments and bickers. Would you agree? Me and you maybe would have arguments, but me and Chloe didn't have any arguments moving in. <laughs> didn't but you? But if I moved in with you, trust me, there would be arguments, yeah. Yeah, but you you would pick an <laughs> argument with me. Yeah, like, I would. Yeah. Because you would annoy me on that situation. I wouldn't. I, you would just get stressed out probably and just start ranting and raving at me and choking at me. But we don't, do we argue, we don't argue much, do we? I don't think much. So one thing about me and Liam we don't really like have big arguments. I think we've had like, I can count on one hand. I would say maybe three quite big yeah. arguments. Um, three to four, maybe five big arguments in the whole time. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe in the whole time, I suppose. But it, it's a, it's like a, you know, we have the little ones and we the little bickers. We bicker. Um, like, for instance, now, Millie came down to Wales uh, all week last week, and we didn't really bicker. Yeah, so Sunday night, we went we went to bed, and we were like, right, let's put a film on tonight now, and we'll catch up in bed early, and and yeah, whatever. So we put the film on, and I didn't quite like the film Aww. which we were watching. I didn't quite like what we were watching. And so I thought, I'll turn her off, and Millie was like, oh, I'm just going to go to bed then. And she turned over, pretended like she was going to go to sleep. She wasn't even tired. And <laughs> so I put then, like, I put Bad Boys on. Bad, bad Boys was on Sky. I thought, I'll oh, chuck this on now. I said, I'll oh, watch this for me. Boys. No, I don't want to watch Bad Boys. Give me all that then. And we started bickering then, arguing. And, uh, well, arguing, it was bickering. And like, she was like, trying to prove a point. So she was pretending, I'm trying to go to sleep then. She wasn't even tired. And then we didn't <laughs> speak for like, 20 minutes. And I think I curled over in and, and kissed you and, and clutched you. And, but what I did, well, I was like, all right then, let's put a different film on. Let's put, let's put what you want on. And she's like, nah, I don't want to, I'm going to sleep. And it was just like little, little bickers like that. Yeah, I think it, um, we're both stubborn, but I think maybe I'm a little bit more stubborn than you, do you think? Yeah, oh yeah. Like when I don't when I don't get my way. But I feel like I always compromise and I feel like I always do what you want to do. I always, you know, I'll come for a walk with you. You make me go to the gym. I do it. I do all, all of this stuff. And then it gets to like wanting to put a film on where there's so many genres that we both love, right? But the one genre I don't like watching, this is like pure relationship like problems, by the way. Like this is so silly. But like, I don't like action films. So when Liam's puts on Bad Boys, it actually grinds my gears. But I, I, I always Sexy watch action. what you, if you want to watch a certain genre, I'll always watch it with you. Because but, you like them. Yeah, all right. But you will never put on, like, let me put on an action film. And then you pretend like you don't like it, but then you quite enjoy it sometimes. Then. I don't, I don't. Action, or you know those films that are, like, set in the bloody, oh, my God, like Lord of the Rings. hundreds. Oh, my God. And it's like, or it's a war film. She um, hates war films. I hate them with a passion. I literally <laughs> would rather scratch my own eye out than watch your, <laughs> than watch one of these stupid war films that Liam watches. Oh my I God, love it's them depressing. More. You know, like the gladiators where they're wearing like the bloody iron. Are you not entertained? Are you oh, not entertained? Oh my, that's just that's just giving me the ick now. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I'm entertained. Where watching we, what, this. Like, what even is that from? What's that from? Gladiator. Oh, Russell Crowe. Oh my god. Are you not entertained? I kept. Like, we heard I, you the first time. I know, but I just feel like I did it that time a little bit better, more of a no, husky voice. So I was like, Are you not entertained? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> one more time. Stop it. Stop it's it. It's a great film. It's a classic. And the second one is literally coming out on the 14th of November. I I'm coming. not going to be here. We're in Berlin. Um, I'm not coming. So I'll be going to watch that one on my own probably when I get back. Good. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll share with you the reviews. Um, not that Millie will care. <laughs> no, I can't wait. So we do, we bicker more than actually argue. Um, what has been the most stupidest thing we've ever bickered about? Um, the stupidest thing? Oh, I don't know. It's probably been a lot. There's a lot. There's a it's lot. a lot. <laughs> there is a lot. I think like... When Liam doesn't like taking a nice picture of me, I get really annoyed. 
<laughs> but I'm a lot better at taking photos now. Like in our early days, I was not good at taking photos, and Millie would would be she'd be annoyed. Would lash no, out, I which would. I understand. I understand because now I've got a certain. St- if I want a photo taken of myself, I got yeah. a certain standard of how it looks. And if my mother takes it, which she'd be like this, like <laughs> the phone like this, like that with her eyes, and she'd be like this, tapping the button, and it would look absolutely horrendous. I'm like, man, what are you doing? Exactly. I think this is quite a relatable thing, right? Girls, when you get dressed up nice and like you're going out for like date night with your boyfriend or girlfriend or whoever, and like you want a good pick for the gram, Mm. right? Like you just do. And then the amount of energy that I put in into taking pictures of like Liam or my friends, like I'm getting those angles. I'm making sure you look your best. Yeah. Slay. Yeah. Like this has got to be slay, <laughs> slay, slay. <laughs> and then I give it like, I'm taking these bagging pictures of Liam. Not so much, not so much to now, but sometimes he doesn't give the energy. Um, but back. He doesn't give the energy. You don't. Like, and then I pass the phone to you and it's like, uh, 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 like, not even thinking about angles, just quickly like taking four photos. Like no, they... I don't. Do good ones, you. I'm always, I'm always giving. I'm always giving no, energy. Recently, you've got better, I think, because <laughs> I've had to teach him. Like I had to say, look, this is the angle because we mm. used to argue so much when he would do it that I now we don't. You know, it saves the argument a little bit because I. It be does, like, yeah. Like all I get now, I don't get shouted at. All I get is slay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all she says now, because I'm giving, I'm giving, I'm giving slay, I'm giving energy slay. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, okay, all right, we get it, it's slay, <laughs> we get it. Um, what else? There's got to be other ones. Um, oh, I tell you a good one. Driving, sorry, driving! sorry, I'm interrupted. Oh, driving, to yeah. <laughs> driving. You literally read my mind. <laughs> I hate Millie's driving. No. And I think she hates no, mine no. as well. Millie is a quite a good driver. She is quite a good driver, I but she's driver. sometimes a nervous driver. She doesn't understand spatial no, awareness. Not. Uh, she doesn't think she'll fit through certain gaps when she will. True. So when I'm driving, it's annoying when you have passenger driver next to you, literally in your ear, commenting on every single thing that you're doing. Like my dad does it to my stepmom and I feel so sorry for Deb every time. Deb is my stepmom. I feel so sorry every time we're in the car because being a witness to dad doing it, I'm like, dad, shut up. Just leave her drive. And now I have Liam who does it to me. He's like, whoa, whoa, watch that. Or, oh my God, there's someone there. Like, whoa, what are you like? Just <laughs> these reactions. Like I can't see that someone's there. And said so it panics me then. And I'm like, shut up, Liam. <laughs> and he comments on everything I'm doing. Oh, I don't. She's lying. She's exaggerating there now. She's you exaggerating. And it, <laughs> and it get, oh my God, I get so annoyed. And then the worst time we've ever had it, I think this was a bicker that turned into a quite a serious argument. We went to Italy and we hired a car. Oh, yes. Right? <laughs> we decided to hire a car because we wanted to drive between like Positano and Sorrento and Oh my God, it was absolutely amazing. But if there's any Italians watching this, let me know if you agree or disagree, but they do drive a bit crazy on the road. Drive nuts. So now I'm like, Liam, I'm going to put your name on on the insurance. You need to drive because I don't think I'm confident enough to do it. And me being the man, which I am, I took control. I drove. But when you got a passenger like Millie next to you, a paranoid wreck, uh, I was that's paranoid. When you that's, I drove yeah. well the whole time, right? I drove brilliantly. And... The roads, right? Basically, Positano and stuff is built, and Sorrento is built on a cliff. It's little tiny lanes. Tiny. And the car's coming towards us. Tiny. Like, the lanes are really small. So I'm tight to the right-hand side because oh. I don't want to... His lorry's coming towards us. I want to get clipped by a lorry. So Millie's screaming. Obviously, I'm on the left-hand side driving. Millie's on the right. So she's like, you're going to hit like, the wall. You're going to hit the wall. You're going to hit the building. What are you doing? Screaming at me. And it kept putting me off. So I shouted. I said, don't you dare do that again. Puts me off. And then she'd done it again then. And I thought, right, I draw the line here. I pulled over. I speed, sped up, pulled over. I said, right, f- this. I'm getting out. You can drive. And uh, if you've got so if you've got so much to say about my driving, that's it. You can drive. Oh, but I now, was tamping. Yeah. I was, that's when I was annoyed. I really was annoyed with that point. So I thought, I'm driving you now, driving well. And you keep nit- nitty picking at me, <laughs> shouting at me. And I draw, drew the line there. And I was annoyed. I dr- skidded over. I said, right, I'm getting out. You drive. No, I said, come on, you t- and you're like, no, shut up, shut up, go on, get back in, get back in. <laughs> I'm like, no, f- 
Go on, you can you get the passenger seat. You can get in the driver's seat. I'll be We're passing. shouting in the streets of, of, of yeah. Italy, like literally and, shouting. And she wouldn't get in the driver's seat. And I thought, right, exactly. You won't drive. So if I'm driving, I'm taking this pig to market. You know what I mean? I'm driving. So I shout then. She did then. She she uh, she saw it. Because I don't get annoyed often, right? I'm Ask me, I'm very, no, very don't. laid back. I'm chill. I don't get annoyed. Um, And I was annoyed at that point. And Millie knew she had triggered me and annoyed me. Yeah. I think when I see you angry like that, I'm like, Oh shit! I've actually pressed a bit too many buttons here. I've gone, <laughs> I've gone too far because it, it, it takes a lot for Liam to get annoyed. He's such a chilled out person that I actually get a bit worried when I make him like that. Then I think, whoops. But to my defense, <laughs> well, I'm going to worry. I'm not. I'm just going to shut. I'm not going to do anything. You know, no, I know. But like, I don't. I don't like. Don't like to see you like that. You know. Stop making me like it, there, woman. Hey, I don't. But driving I will, me insane. You are. I will say. That you was just driving in a bit too, bit too like close of a lane. Uh, all I can say, I did have a Mini Cooper Sport, you know. So I was like, skirt, skirt. Yeah, I was no, loving it. I had the the roof down. I was, you know, my arm around my woman, like a uh, arm on the wind. Uh, I was just chilling, and driving around uh, Italy. I was loving it. Uh, you literally <laughs> thought that you were such a G, and you was literally six foot, bloody six guy in a Mini Cooper. <laughs> you didn't look like a G. Right, let's go on to... It's that time of the week, people. That time uh, of the week. favourite time of the week. And the time of the week is... Listener's Hotline. Very nice. Right, so... I like that one. Thank you. Uh, it was a bit more of a melody, that one. Yeah, um, it's good. So, guys, if you want to write into us, then you can. Um, just it's Liam and Millie at sonymusic.com. You can email, um, or you can message us on Instagram or TikTok at Liam and Millie Podcast. Tell us yeah. anything you want. Tell us everything. And we begin a lot of fun stories, a lot of wild stuff, but give us your loved ones as well, because I love the ones that tug on our heartstrings. I am a helpless romantic and I do get emotional I know but I'm also like due on my period so next week I will be on and then I might cry so <laughs> same first one this email is titled no trust in our relationship hey Millie and Liam love the podcast just burped so sorry love the podcast I need some help my boyfriend and I started going out a few months ago shortly after I moved house. So we were now doing long distance. Our communication wasn't great and he never made an effort to come and visit me. One night I got extremely drunk and kissed a random guy on a night out. Ooh. I felt really bad and told my boyfriend the next day, good. To which he responded he had done the same thing four weeks before. Damn. We went on a break but got back together soon after and are still together now. I just wonder if we've ruined the trust element of the relationship. What do you think? Oh. I think you have to be very strong and stable in your relationship to be able to do long distance. Because if there is that slight little bit of, hmm, I'm unsure about this, then doing long distance I think will end it. Don't you think, babe? Yeah, I believe so. Obviously, we've been doing long distance. And even when we, you know, we were together, we, you know, I'd go back to Wales, you'd be in Essex. And I think it's just like we're constant communication. You know, we, we do post a lot of our lives on social media. So we kind of always know where we are. But I think, though, that before we broke up, like a month leading up to that, when things started to like change a little bit, um, when you went to Wales, it, I I knew something weren't right because I was worried. And I don't, like, when you're at home in Wales, I literally don't think about, like, what you're doing and worry about that at all. Like, obviously, yeah. I, I know what you're doing. But then I would worry and I'd be like, where Probably is he? PlayStation. Was... Yeah, literally, that's what you're doing. <laughs> okay. Sweating out on PlayStation like a weirdo. <laughs> um, but before I was like, oh... Is he like with girls? Like, is he lying about where he is? Like, I'm gonna, I want him to find friends. Like, I did start getting a bit paranoid, but then that's because deep down I knew that something wasn't right in our relationship. Yeah. And obviously, we ended up breaking up anyway. So, like now, I feel, I feel like I've got that ultimate trust there. Right? I just literally, I don't know, you know, you know, you never know what could happen. But um, no, but we have. Like, I know, you know, we know what we're both doing. We speak all the time, you know, and. 
We always give each other updates. I think you gotta, yeah, you gotta have trust in each other and have a strong relationship when you do in long distance. You do. <clears throat> so if there's doubts and there's cracks, the long distance can make that a lot worse. Yeah. Thing is, right, so they've gone on a break. So maybe like things were going a bit downhill then and you weren't both in it. That's why you both did what you did. You went on a break and you've got back together. So hopefully this second time round, if you feel more confident about the relationship and, you know, what's your gut saying? Like, is is this for the long run now? Like, I feel like it could be because you you have got back together. People don't get back together for the second time if they don't really want to try and make it work. Otherwise, what is the point? Yeah. Wasting well, you know, more time. Yeah. But people do that. They get back and they go back together like 10 times a name before they actually call it quits. <laughs> well, yeah, when you're like young. <laughs> Maybe. But anyway, good luck. We hope it works out. Yeah. Um, and make sure there's no more kissing on our nights out. Okay. So we have another email from Liv. Hi, Liam and Millie. I am fuming and need some advice on this wedding nightmare that just won't stop haunting me. My best friend's plus one, let's call her Jessica, walks into my reception dressed head to toe in white. <gasps> It felt like such a calculated, attention-grabbing move. And I can't shake this fury. Every time I think about it, I feel like it was a slap in the face on a day that was supposed to be all about me and my new husband. Yeah. So what would you do? Do I confront her? Am I supposed to just rise above? Thank you so much. Love you both. We love you too. Absolutely. Go up to her and say, please, can you leave my wedding, (laughs) you selfish, heartless girl? Wow. So obviously for me, I'm not a female. Like, I don't get that thing so much. Obviously, Millie is the better person to get yeah. a response on this. Absolutely not. I don't even care whose bloody plus one it is, whether it's your best friends, your nans, your mums or your sisters. Nobody at your wedding, unless approved beforehand, like your mum or something, I don't know, mm. or your bridesmaids, should be wearing white. Absolutely not. So is that what... So? When me and you get married now, someone comes to our wedding dressed in white, what are you doing? Asking them to leave. Or if if I'm not feeling confrontational enough, I'll ask like my mum or my mate to ask them to leave. <laughs> Fair move. What would Fair you move. what would you do if you was a girl? I'd go over her and chuck red wine all over her, so then she's wearing a red dress. Good, exact yeah, I like yeah. it. What about if like a man was wearing the exact same suit? Um, well, I probably would say yeah, look at you, bro. We're <laughs> twins. Like that's why men are so much like easier. <laughs> like I would not care if a man had the same suit on as me. Like we would probably see each other. We start laughing and pissing, and we go and buy each other a pint. Look at Literally us in the same suit, funny. and we have photos together all day. You would be in all the photos, photos together all day. We had the same suit. That's the difference between men and women. Men don't give a shit about stuff like that. Women, it will ruin their day. It will ruin their. Uh, life wedding you know it will just be genuinely a man would find it yeah. hilarious i would be bridezilla oh what bridezilla they always say like bridezilla is a thing from the moment you start planning your wedding up until i think so anyway don't quote me on that but like if you're a bridezilla it's just you're just a really aggy bride and i think right. that would you reckon that would be me in like planning yeah the wedding? i think so because you'd be a bit stressed you'd want it to be amazing for everyone else and for yourself, and then you'll get stressed out then, little things. Yeah. Um, and you'll be like, Rah! Godzilla, Bridezilla. <laughs> you'll be the, the beast would come out. <laughs> you, you'll you have it in the neck. No, I'm joking. Millie's not shallow. No, no, I wouldn't be that bad. But like, I wouldn't probably like let you make any final decisions either. Yeah, you probably wouldn't. Um, I, what, what, what would you want to do? Um, Like music or something. Like, you know, what sort of songs love on the wedding day? The music. Oh, do you know what? Good idea, actually, because I'd I'll let you do that. Yeah, but everything else, I'm really, you, I'm just leave it down to you. I would want to like make sure there's good alcohol behind the bar. Yeah. Um, and I re I really don't care about anything else. We could discuss like together. I think food that would have to be joint decision. Yeah, we'll do that. Um, but like I honestly, I would just come and support support and stuff and make sure everything's you no know, nice. Um, but whatever I'd want to do, you wouldn't let it happen anyway. You would, no. you would want it perfect. And I would, I'd, I'd let you just go ahead and do what you want. And this does remind me, and this is going to sound really mean, and it's going to be our last story before we end it. But on that 
note of where I, <laughs> Liam just lets me do whatever I want because otherwise I won't agree. But when we moved into that house together in Essex, I, you know, did the whole interior. He didn't really have much of a say at all about at all. what was going in that house. I picked everything and he tried to do the sofa and I was like, well, no, like I, I need to know what this sofa looks like before you order it. <laughs> Anyway, he comes home and he brings in this massive canvas. It wasn't massive. It was I've, I got huge. these two Muhammad Ali canvases, right, which I've had Muhammad since I was a kid. Muhammad Ali. Which I would hang them up. In. <laughs> I would hang them up in my bedroom growing up. And I've had them all my life. And I brought them to Essex and I said to Millie, I want to hang them up somewhere. She was like, absolutely not. They're not going anywhere. Um, <laughs> so then... In the end, the one downstairs room, which no one would go in. No one uses it. Um, I was allowed to put them up in there. Uh, <laughs> and then when I when we broke up, she was like, that was the first thing. She just chucked, she chucked down. She's like, put in a box for me so I can he collect. He straight away. So yeah, I don't really have much of a say. <laughs> well, that's it for this week. Thank you all for listening once again. I've said this last time, but we hope you're enjoying because we're loving it. And we hope you enjoy watching and listening. Follow us on socials at Liam and Millie Podcast on Instagram and TikTok. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Don't forget. Yeah, please do. And we've asked you to leave a couple of comments on things, haven't we, some questions. So please do. And we'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>